Okay, so to begin, I'd like to thank the organisers for giving us the opportunity to present our work at AQUIS. Um, this is joint work with Bartosz Regular, Hakop Pashayan, Yinkai Uyang and Earl Campbell. Um, so the goal of this work is to use insights from the resource theory of magic to design improved classical simulation methods for many qubit quantum circuits based on the stabiliser formalism. In case you're not familiar with stabilizer states, for the purposes of this talk, you just need to know that they are states with an efficient classical description, which we treat as the free states in our resource theory. Uh, free operations are those that preserve this set. And the Gottesman Nil theorem tells us that quantum circuits initialized with stabilizer states and comprise of stabilizer preserving operations are efficiently simulable by classical computers. Stabilizer circuits are promoted to universality by injecting magic states. This requires a specific type of state, but in this talk I will use magic state to mean any non-stabilizer state. We can still use stabilizer techniques to simulate these universal circuits, but with some simulation overhead that scales with the number of magic states. Back in 2004, Aronson and Gottesman showed that a circuit with m injected magic states can be simulated in time exponential in m. This method was state agnostic in the sense that the scaling only depends on, depends on the number of magic state copies, not the specific type of state. But resource theory of magic tells us that some states are more or less non-stabilizer than others. We still expect an exponential scaling, but in more recent simulators, the exponent is sensitive to the amount of magic contained in each copy. Formally, uh, this amount, this runtime can be quantified by magic monotones. Uh, these are well-behaved measures of magic that are non-increasing under stabilizer operations. Recent work on this topic can broadly be divided into two strands, quasi-probability methods and stabilizer rank methods. Quasi-probability approaches include phase-space methods, where hardness of classical simulation is related to the negativity of the discrete Wigner function. This approach works e elegantly for odd-dimension qubits, but there are technical issues with applying this to um, the case of qubits which is um, what we're primarily interested in in our paper. Another approach is the robustness of magic, introduced by Howard and Campbell. This is more closely related to some of the methods we discuss. Uh, on the other side, we have stabilizer rank methods. So these relate to measures of magic for pure states. In particular, stabilizer rank and extent are two pure state monotones I will touch on later in the talk. Each of the monotones I've mentioned has been used to quantify the runtime for an associated classical simulator, each with their own advantages and disadvantages. Robustness of magic is defined for general mixed states, uh, but is generally much larger than stabilizer extent for the special case of pure states. It's also difficult to compute the monotone for many qubit states, making, meaning that for large scale simulation, we have to work with suboptimal decompositions. Stabilizer rank methods are faster, but defined only for pure states. So there seems to be this discontinuous performance gap between a fast method for pure states and a slower simulator that emits noisy states and operations. In this paper, we introduce two simulation techniques which address these shortcomings, where the runtime is quantified by newly defined computable monotones. We also shed some light on the formal connections between quasi-probability and stabilizer rank, which previously seemed unrelated. I will now summarize some of the main results from the paper before discussing uh, them in more detail. The monotones we study all have these standard resource theoretic properties. And the first simulator we introduce is the dyadic frame simulator, which is the descended from quasi-probability methods and allows classical estimation of Born rule probabilities up to additive error in a runtime that scales with a monotone called dyadic negativity. Uh, this runtime is exponentially gapped from previous qubit quasi-probability simulators. The second simulator is the stabilizer rank simulator extended to mixed states. This allows simulated sampling from the output distribution of a quantum circuit, and the runtime is again given by a monotone, the mixed state extent. In the process of extending uh, this technique to the density operator picture, we obtain a significant improvement in performance. Mixed state extent is lower bounded by dyadic negativity, but we show that equality holds in certain important cases. For the pure state case, both monotones are equal to the pure state extent, linking the quasi-probability and stabilizer rank pictures. The monotones are equal and multiplicative for tensor products of single qubit states, and we give a complete analytic characterization for the single qubit case, so that the monotones 
monotones are efficiently computable for tensor product states. Now I'll focus in on quasi-probability methods and a dyadic frame simulator. The central idea in previous work has been that the density operator for the initial state of some quantum circuit is decomposed as a real linear combination of usually Hermitian trace one operators from some possibly overcomplete basis. Since these coefficients can be negative, it is a quasi-probability distribution rather than a true probability distribution. But supposing we want to estimate the expected value of some observable at the output of the circuit, we can renormalize the distribution as a probability distribution over elements with magnitude increased by this factor, which is the L1 norm of the distribution. The L1 norm quantifies the amount of negativity in the decomposition. For a probabilistic mixture, the norm will be equal to 1 and will be larger than 1 otherwise. This leads to a simulation algorithm where we repeatedly sample one of the basis elements, propagate it through the circuit and compute, compute the expected value at the output. This gives us an unbiased estimator for the quantum mean value. Computing each sample is assumed to be efficient, but in general we need many samples to converge to the true value. And you can show that to achieve some fixed additive error epsilon, the number of samples needed scales with the L1 norm squared. Howard and Campbell used these ideas to define the robustness of magic. Any density operator can always be written as a real linear combination of pure stabilizer state projectors. In this cartoon picture, you should think of the vertices of this polytope as pure stabilizer states, so that the points highlighted on the boundary or points in the interior are probabilistic mixtures of stabilizer states. For states lying outside the polytope, the decomposition must include at least some negativity but there are in general many possible decompositions. The robustness of magic uh, is defined as the minimum L1 norm over all valid decompositions and turns out to be a well-behaved magic monotone. This is a quasi-probability distribution over stabilizer states, so it leads to a classical simulator where we sample a stabilizer state and propagate through the circuit before producing a sample value for some observable. With the runtime, it's given by the robustness squared. In our paper, we obtain new magic monotones by relaxing the definition of magic in two ways. One of these is called the, ro the generalized robustness. You might be familiar with this from other resource theories. I won't spend more time on it in this talk, but it does lead to an estimation method we call the constrained pass simulator. If you're interested, please take a look at the paper. The one I'd like to focus on is the dyadic negativity. The way that we define this is by replacing pure stabilizer state projectors with what we call stabilizer dyads. These rank one operators where the ket on the left and the bra on the right uh, correspond to different pure stabilizer states. We minimize the L1 norm over all possible complex linear combinations of these dyads. This is a superset that is strictly larger um, than the set of pure stabilizer states, so dyadic ne negativity always lower bounds robustness. And in practice, it turns out to be uh, often significantly smaller. We show in the paper that this still leads to a classical simulator, which we call the dyadic frame simulator, where we sample a dyad and propagate through the circuit. It turns out there are a couple of technical hurdles we need to overcome, and we show in the paper how this is done. Briefly, since dyads can be non-Hermitian and coefficients are complex, we need to track the phase as the diode is updated through the circuit. So we need to use more modern CHP Clifford simulators rather than the standard stabilizer tableau method. Second, we cannot use the standard Born rule to compute any intermediate transition probabilities for non-unitary operations. It turns out that using the Shatton 1 norm, we can still um, obtain an unbiased estimator. In practical terms, using dyadic decompositions can lead to significant performance improvements over stabilizer state decompositions. Here we compare the monotones for tensor products of noisy single qubit magic states. As I've said, dyadic negativity is exactly multiplicative for this type of state. This gives us this, uh, this lower line here. Uh, we can't compute robustness of magic for large n, but we do have rigorous upper and lower bounds. So we, we show the robustness as the shaded region. Um, so the first lower bound uh, is significant for small n. Um, more importantly, we show that the gap between dyadic negativity and robustness grows exponentially with n. 
and we obtain this using a multiplicative lower bound on the robustness of magic. I'm now going to turn to stabilizer rank methods. So previously these methods have been confined to pure states. Uh, the central idea is that any pure state can be written as a superposition of stabilizer states. There are many stabilizer bases, so there are many ways to do this and the terms need not be orthogonal. Stabilizer rank is the smallest number of terms needed to write such a superposition for a given state. Stabilizer extent instead minimizes the L1 norm squared. Extent can be computed using convex optimization, but in general the stabilizer rank is hard to compute and decompositions can have a very large number of terms. But if we relax the definition to allow an approximation to the target state, then we can reduce the number of terms needed. So in particular, Bravi et al. introduced a randomized algorithm for sparsifying a target state. Terms in the approximation are chosen with a probability proportional to the weight in the exact decomposition. The sparsification lemma due to Bravi et al. showed that provided we can set the number of terms proportional to the extent over delta squared, the proxy will on average be a delta close approximation to the target state. The significance of this is that stabilizer rank simulators have a runtime that scales with the number of terms in the decomposition. By sparsifying the state vector, we obtain a runtime that scales with stabilizer extent and the inverse square of the sparsification error. In our paper, we first extend stabilizer extent to general density operators using the convex roof extension. Uh, we essentially take the minimum average extent over all possible ensemble decompositions. So these are in general pure states, each with its own extent. Naively, the convex roof extension is difficult to compute, but in the paper we give a complete analytic solution for single qubit states and tensor products of single qubit states. So it is efficiently computable. Next, we give a new sparsification proof, where instead of analyzing the error between a particular sparsification and uh, the target state, as was done in Bravi et al., we compare the target state with the ensemble of possible sparsifications. From this perspective, we show that to achieve delta error in the trace norm, we only need to set the number of terms proportional to one over delta rather than one over delta squared, and we obtain a commensurate reduction in the runtime. For our mixed state simulator, the runtime scales with mixed state extent. This is an average case runtime in general, but for tensor product states, we show it becomes the worst case runtime, as one can find equimagical decompositions where each pure state in the, in the ensemble has the same extent. Finally, I want to tie these methods together by means of our resource theory results. So in general, the three monotones we define in the paper satisfy these inequalities, but we showed that they are equal for important cases, namely single qubit states and pure states, where they also equal the pure state extent. This provides the link between stabilizer rank and quasi-probability methods. In the most general case, the monotones would be hard to compute, but for the important case of uh, tensor products of single qubit mixed states, they're multiplicative, so it can be computed efficiently, and we can obtain decompositions that can be used in practical simulations. Turning to future work, an important next step is to extend the methods in our paper to direct simulation of non-stabilizer channels so that we can avoid the need for gadgetization. On the practical side, we've computed costs for tensor products of single qubit states, but it would be useful to do some benchmarking and understand simulation costs for real quantum circuits of interest so that we can compare with other simulation schemes and identify where stabilizer-based techniques have an advantage. Linked to this, it would be good to see the algorithms coded up for full-scale quantum circuit simulation. In this paper, we focus on the resource theory of magic, but we also discuss how our techniques can be generalized to other resource theories. Further study in this vein would be interesting. Finally, I mentioned that we can compute the monotones efficiently for tensor products of single qubit states, but it would be useful to be able to compute them for more general states. I'll finish with this summary of the main results of our paper, including some things I didn't have time to talk about, such as an additional simulation algorithm based on the generalized robustness, which we call the constrained path simulator. And the generalized robustness also provides bounds for rates of magic state distillation. Thank you for listening. I'll be happy to answer any questions on Slack.